Hi, welcome everybody. Can you hear me fine? Okay, thank you very much for your feedback. I'm happy that everybody can hear me. Just in case, if you miss any part of the webinar for any reasons, we will uh, follow up with a complete recording and uh, we will have all the questions. So we are starting right now. Welcome to our webinar, how to track and optimize your native advertising campaigns with MGIT and RedTrack. And uh, what we're gonna see today is uh, we'll help people who want to buy and track native traffic. We answer some specific questions regarding uh, buying traffic on MGIT and using RedTrack uh, to track your campaigns. And we will share some of the, well, not very obvious uses of both tools. So today, you'll listen to me, uh, Vlad, I'm the product manager of RedTrack, and uh, Eugene uh, from MGIT will join, uh, actually he's here, but he'll join us for the part of uh, speaking about buying traffic on MGIT platform. Well, what we have today is uh, we'll create a campaign in RedTrack, just very quickly, very uh, top-level things, uh, and then we'll go into details on the Q&A sessions. We'll do the same with MG platform, and we'll answer all the questions you might have. Again, uh, we are reading questions as we do the presentation, so if you want us to stop and to focus on a specific area, a niche, feel free to write all your questions. Uh, we'll try to incorporate them into the presentation. So, let's start with RedTrack. Uh, I'll start a screen sharing session and uh, we'll go quickly through RedTrack interface. We'll add MG as a traffic source. We'll show you how to add affiliate networks, offers, custom domains, landing pages, and then we'll set up uh, a campaign to generate a tracking URL, which uh, Eugene will uh, use later on to send traffic to from MG. Well, if you have any questions right now, feel free to ask. If not, let's roll. Okay, so this is a red trick interface and it has uh, two distinct sections. Uh, Menu uh, navigation tabs where you manage your uh, well tracking activities and uh, navigation or tabs where you manage your account. So for us, for this webinar, we need to start with other traffic source. Then we'll go to networks uh, to add affiliate network. Then we'll go to offers to add an offer. And then we'll go to just review landing pages and domains. And we'll uh, finish up in campaigns that will allow us to create a tracking URL. Well, uh, guys, uh, I see messages that display is not clear. Um, that's uh, the maximum screen resolution I have. I'm very sorry. Uh, we will, again, post the video of this webinar and uh, you'll be able to uh, get it in a better resolution than you see it right now. So let us start with this, adding a traffic source. With red track, uh, you can do it either manually, just clicking uh, new and filling out all the fields that you have, or like in case with MG and many other partners of red track, you can just do it from preset template to speed things up. So when you scroll down to MG and click add, you will have the traffic source that you can name differently, like two will do it for this case. You have post back URL available by default. Just please know that uh, there is one place, type of the event that is lit by default that you might want to change later on to something more specific to your uh, campaigns. And uh, my colleagues from MG will tell about this more. Uh, all the tokens are at place, all the sub IDs that are available are also in place. So all you have to do is just click save and you have your traffic sources ready. So we have two market MGs, one from the previous webinar. So let's delete this one. 
which also works. So this is uh, the traffic source we have. So next thing we usually do in any tracking solution is we add uh, affiliate networks. We add them following the same logic as we do with traffic sources. You either create one from scratch or one from template. So let's pick up guys from Fearfly. They like to recommend us quite often. Uh, as you can see, we have name, URL, Skype is only for reference. You can add your account manager Skype here and then post back URL. That's exactly the post back for red track that you need to paste into your PFY account to receive all the conversions. Again, we click save and we have this network available. Again, we have more than one network. You can rename them or you can just delete one of them. That's very easy. It works. Again, we show you that it works. And then you add your offer. In here, a couple of good things. You can, of course, have tags, but uh, more important is that when you add an offer, you add name, you add uh, your affiliate network, that's the PFI we added, and it automatically uh, adds the postback URL, so we don't need to go all the time to the network, we just copy it from here. You can also uh, add a payout if you have a default payout, or you can use additional uh, macros in the postback like some macro for dynamic payout. And you can also add a conversion cap so that uh, you don't send more traffic to this offer or, and get, don't get more conversion than allowed by the terms of the offer. And you can also limit the number of unique people who see this offer so that if you show one offer to the same person more than one time a day, he's unlikely to convert the second time. So do it like this. So once a day. And then, last important thing, you add to your offer URL with click ID, which we won't do right now. Or we won't use any real offers. We have some template that I did for our web webinar. This is the one. We have name. We have some placeholder affiliate network. We can do like my affiliate network. We have URL. And uh, alert actually sends you an email to the email used to create a RedTrack account when the cap is reached. So if you put 10, you get these uh, 10 conversions a day and uh, alert is on. So uh, when you receive 10 conversion, we will notify you that the cap is reached and you might want to take some actions based on this. Although our system automatically will, start, will stop sending traffic to this particular offer. Well, Besides offers, you can add landing pages. And we have uh, pretty much detailed instructions right on this page, uh, what uh, tags you might want to add to a landing page for proper tracking. Same goes for domains. You can add uh, multiple custom domains to generate uh, tracking URLs. Moreover, if you go to these tool sections to conversion pixel, you can use your uh, custom domains to receive uh, postback events. So you don't have to send them to default uh, red track service domain. You can use it to your custom tracking domain if you want to. With all this said and done, you have uh, set up your traffic source, like MGIT, MGIT2 in our case. We have added uh, our affiliate network, Bearfly. We have added uh, an offer for this affiliate network and let us change this. For example, let's have a fly in here just for the sake of showing. And uh, you can also add a landing page and a custom domain. And now you're ready to create a campaign. Well, you need to create a campaign to generate a tracking URL that you will later on send traffic to from MG. In campaigns, you just click new. And you test uh, MG campaign. Then you pick up traffic source MG. You pick up uh, one of the custom domains or a little bit blank to use default red track tracking domain. You decide on what type uh, redirect you want to have, just regular one, or you want to hide the data from your affiliate network and use one of the hidden redirects. You then set up uh, the cost model, most likely a CPC for MGIT. You can also set up a default uh, click cost 
although MG will pass you the click cost dynamically. You then uh, add landing page if you have any. You add offers. You can add landing page here, but we also can remove them. And uh, then you also activate postback, which again will be populated by default from an MG template uh, to pass back conversions. And if you wish, you can also pass back payouts to MG. When you've done all this, just click save. And you have a tracking URL. With this tracking URL, you can now proceed to MG the account and set up your campaign. So I stop here. I will answer all your red track related questions uh, later on and we'll proceed with uh, MG interface presentation. So let me uh, give a word to Jim. I will answer all your red track related questions uh, later on and we'll proceed with uh, MG interface presentation. So let me uh, give a word to Jim. Hello. Uh, guys, hi. Uh, if, if you can hear me, can you please uh, type yes or plus? Awesome. How everybody is doing today? All good? Hope all the campaigns are profitable. <laughs> Okay, Vlad, uh, wouldn't you mind if I'll share my screen uh, with the audience? Jack, no. No profitable campaigns. How come? Use the link. You'll see in the end of the presentation. Join MJD, and we'll do our best to make the campaigns profitable. Okay, still waiting for the screen sharing. Just say, guys. Okay, can you see my screen? That's good. Quality of the picture is okay. Okay, guys. So uh, once again, thanks everyone for uh, for coming to the webinar, and uh, let's start with a quick overview of MJD dashboard. Uh, I will show you what you can see there, what uh, what manipulations with the campaigns you can do, and then we'll move forward to the campaign setup, and uh, I'll show you a few tricks on how to optimize the campaign in the best way possible. Okay, so let's start with a quick overview of uh, MJD client's dashboard. Uh, obviously, you can see uh, the, uh, the performance of your campaigns and uh, see the spent dynamic. Uh, basically, in the end of the page, uh, you can see the list of the campaigns that you've created. Uh, some of the campaigns may be post, some may be active. Uh, you obviously can see the number of impressions you, uh, you receive per every campaign, number of clicks, uh, the budget you've spent uh, for a certain campaign, average CPC of a certain campaign, uh, the number of conversions uh, you got from the campaign, the average conversion cost, the amount of ad units that you have uh, created per each campaign, and uh, some actions that you can um, do with the campaign. Basically, you can go to the ad li uh, ads list. You can see the uh, detailed statistics of the campaign. You can go to campaign settings and adjust it. You can go to the feature of selected bidding. That is an awesome uh, feature that we are proud of to have. I will tell a little bit more about this later. You can delete the campaign and you can uh, copy the campaign. Okay, so uh, let's try to uh, add a campaign and see how the creation of the campaign goes. While the page is being downloaded, uh, let me introduce you to my colleague Oleg. Uh, he's with me on this webinar and he'll be answering all the questions that you have and 
and those that I'm not really able to answer right now. Say hi to Oleg. Oleg, can you please say hi to, to the fellas? Thanks. Okay, guys. So, uh, uh, campaign setup is super easy. Uh, first of all, you have to uh, give the name to your campaign so you can easily identify it. Uh, let's call it uh, check. Then you have to uh, choose the campaign category in our system. Basically, this is uh, one of two, content promotion or product promotion. Type of the campaign depends on uh, what kind of arbitrage are you in. Is it content arbitrage or you are promoting some kind of products? Let's say we promote products. Uh, then you have to choose the campaign category from the list. Campaign uh, category correlates 100% with the uh, categorization of International Advertising Bureau, so it won't be a problem for you. Okay, let's say uh, we are promoting sporting goods. And then, of course, you have to set up the campaign language. English. Now we move to setting up uh, targeting options. Before that, uh, I will give you a small uh, overview of the of an awesome feature that uh, we've released recently. This is called uh, Traffic Insights. Now it's available in be uh, in beta version. Basically, what it gives you is uh, you can see what are the hot opportunities, best performing geos, and geos with the lowest competition possible in our system. You can see what are the average uh, CPC bids for a certain geo and certain device type and uh, an amount of impressions available in this geo daily. Please feel free to use it and uh, give us your feedback. Okay, let's go back to campaign setup. Basically, we have uh, around six uh, targeting options in MJD. Number one is geo. Uh, you can choose either country or you can go a uh, little bit deeper and uh, choose a certain uh, district. For example, if you'll be targeting United States, you can target uh, the region, you can target state, and you can go deeper to big cities. I will strongly not recommend you to do this because uh, you might be limiting yourself with the amount of traffic you can receive. Or if you have an offer that is targeted for certain uh, geolocation, feel free to use it. You'll definitely take an advantage of this. Okay, uh, let's try to target US. Okay, we have US. Uh, then we are moving to the browser uh, targeting. You can target by uh, browser. Uh, not even one, but a few. Let's say we can we can target those browsers. Okay. Then you have an option of targeting by browser language. Uh, this feature may be really helpful if you are targeting uh, certain audience uh, in a geo that is not actually uh, speaking the language of the geo you are targeting. Uh, to make it simple, let's let's use an example uh, of uh, let's say uh, United States, and uh, you'd like to promote weight loss product uh, for Spanish-speaking audience in Los Angeles area. If you go down to Los Angeles in geo targeting, uh, choose all the browsers that are available, and you choose only Spanish as the uh, browser language. Your, ad, uh, your ads will be shown only to the audience that uh, set up Spanish as the default language of the uh, browser. Then we are going uh, deeper to device targeting. You can target by device type. Or you can choose desktop devices, mobile devices, tablet devices. And one of the best features is that uh, you can take advantage of uh, targeting operation system and version of operation system. Let's say we choose iOS and you can uh, choose the version that suits your offer the most. Okay, we have a question. Uh, we need a select all button here. That's a nice point. We'll take it into consideration. Thank you. Okay. Uh, then we can confirm. 
Oh, red track campaign is already up. Let's make it red track 111. Okay, and uh, now we are moving to the time targeting. Basically, you can choose the dates when the campaign will be active. Let's say uh, from the 26th to the 30th. And of course, uh, you can take advantage of more precise time targeting. Uh, basically, once you see the squares green, it means that the campaign will be active in this time. If you can see squares in red, that means uh, the campaign will not be active uh, in this uh, time slot. Please, guys, bear in mind, I know that uh, you are scattered all around the world. Please bear in mind that uh, our system works according to PST time, Pacific Standard Time. So all the manipulations with time targeting you do should be uh, applied uh, according to PST time. Please uh, make sure that you take into account uh, different uh, time zones. Okay, so basically uh, we can choose when the, uh, the campaign will be active. Uh, for example, the campaign will be paused for the business time in our case. Now we are going to the campaign limits. Basically, you can uh, choose four options of the campaign limit. Uh, as Vlad said, uh, Red Track is really cool because you can set up um, limits of the campaign by the conversion. And we can do pretty much the same in MJD. Basically, you can set up uh, four types of limits uh, for the campaign. It may be unlimited. I would prefer you to use this option and receive as much traffic as you can. Uh, then you can uh, set up a limit by clicks. So basically, how many clicks will your campaign receive on daily basis and overall? Let's say 100. Uh, 1,200 clicks daily and overall 10,000 clicks. Then you can set up a limit uh, by budget. So basically you can set up the amount of funds that you are, are willing to spend on a particular campaign on a daily basis in US dollars and overall campaign limit. And of course uh, you can use uh, limits by conversion the same scheme you set up a uh, daily conversion limit and overall conversion limit are we clear with that i assume yes okay uh, let's move to tracking options mgd supports three tracking solutions uh, three three ways that you can track your campaign by. Uh, the very first one is uh, UTM tagging. I'm pretty sure that all of you know how it's all handled. And uh, if you will use custom tracking tags, I would suggest you to add click ID uh, parameter to your link. And uh, since we are speaking about postback mostly today, uh, I would devote a little bit more time to that. Uh, besides postback and UTM tagging, you can use uh, the conversion sensor. Basically, uh, if, if we can put it in a simple way, this is basically a pixel that will shoot uh, once any action that you are targeting happened, and you will see it in your dashboard. Also, it's not that reliable. I would strongly recommend you to stick uh, to postback and uh, red track when working with us. Okay, so you can set up postback for three actions per one campaign. Basically, you can uh, track three steps in every campaign. This is interest, desire, and action. This may be helpful if you, for example, have a campaign uh, with the payout per lead and per sale or per uh, deposit, whatever. To make it simple, I will explain you how to set up post back with one step. Okay, so uh, we have 
uh, default uh, right now it's only two affiliate uh, networks that are integrated with us. So this is Adcomba and Leadbeat. If you guys work with them, say hi from, uh, from me. If not, uh, you can just create a template yourself. Please choose a new goal. Then uh, goal type postback. And now we are coming to a little bit uh, tricky question. Uh, as Vlad mentioned, uh, please bear in mind that uh, event name that uh, will be sent via postback to your uh, tracking solution, basically with uh, red track, should be unique. And I encourage you to use event name uh, in a way that will allow you and us to identify it if something happens. If something happens. For example, uh, I have a campaign that is targeted for leads, and I can name it lead Yevgen Kushnir 564. And that will allow me as a client to uh, help my account manager find all the conversions and all the data that we have way faster. Uh, then we can uh, set up an expected CPA goal in US dollars. Uh, that will help you to assess uh, the overview of your campaign performance way quicker. If you will not state the expected CPA uh, value, you will not be able to see how profitable your campaign is in MJD dashboard. I know some uh, some of you might be a little bit skeptical about it or maybe afraid of revealing the expected CPA, but please be sure that we do not use this information uh, in, 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 in an appropriate way. You can uh, be sure that uh, this information will be kept as a secret. Then we have a part that URL, uh, you can just click on it and it will be copied to the clip, uh, clipboard. It's not that uh, not that required, let's say, uh, in your case, if you'll be using red track because we are integrated and you can add MGD as the traffic source with the uh, ready-made template. And uh, basically those are your variables that you will have to send to any other uh, tr uh, tracking solution or uh, use the event name that you've stated in MJD dashboard uh, when you set up a postback tracking in red track. Are we clear with that? We can basically save the campaign and we are ready to go and we can move uh, forward to creating ad units. Okay, someone is backing me up. MJD account, thanks a lot, I appreciate. Okay, they limit by conversion. Okay, we're good. And we're good. Now we can move forward to uh, creation of ad unit. I would strongly recommend you to create the campaign with at least 10 ad units to secure the maximum possible exposure of your content on our network. When creating an ad unit, uh, you just have to add the campaign URL that you've generated in Red Track or any other tracking solution. Then you should state the title of the teaser. It should contain no more than 65 characters. Let's say, uh, Red track, the best tracking solution ever. We still have 24 characters left. Then you have to upload uh, an image from your computer. Uh, please bear in mind that uh, the most optimal image size for ad units in our system is uh, 498, uh, 492 by 328. Sorry for that. Then you have to choose the category of the uh, teaser. Please make sure that it co uh, correlates with the category of the ad campaign you created. 
Then you state a price for the CPC. Uh, please uh, make sure that uh, you do understand that uh, the price is stated in US cents, not US dollars. If, you, uh, if I type in 15, it means 15 US cents, not 15 dollars. And yeah, uh, I will cheat a little bit and move to the add units we've already created. Wrong campaign. My bad, sorry. Okay, here is the campaign. And the ad units for the campaign. Basically, this is the way you will see your ad units in our dashboard. You will see the status of your ad unit if it's on moderation, it's active or it's post. You will see the ranking category of an ad unit. And basically, you have uh, four ranks in our system one is pg this is the lightest content possible you can imagine then we have uh, category nc17 then r and not safe for work cpc of an ad unit uh, that you've created the reach of this ad unit in impressions uh, potential reach then impressions that you've received over um, overall yesterday and today and the same goes with clicks budgets uh, you've spent on this particular ad unit number of conversions to actions that you've achieved with this particular ad unit and the conversion cost on average and of course the CTR of an ad unit and of course you can go to settings and adjust your ad unit you can pause it you can uh, archive it or you can go to daily statistics of this ad unit and have uh, a broader overview of its performance. Once you've uh, created your ad units, you can just check how it all works. This is the link that Vlad gave me yesterday for this, for this uh, seminar in Russian. And basically, you are ready to go. Let's imagine that this is the tracking link of our campaign. Once me as a as a user uh, clicked through uh, the link and clicked through through that um, target website, Vlad will see the um, uh, amount of clicks and amount of conversions that uh, me as as a user did in Red Track dashboard. Okay, uh, are we clear with that? Any questions? Okay, uh, Antoine. Uh, the, our system is auction based and basically in order to get the more traffic uh, you can, you have to bid the higher you can. Anyways, uh, the optimal CPC bid uh, depends on the ratio of device type, vertical and geo-targeting. Uh, for example, if we can, uh, if we have an offer uh, that promotes let's say binary options in Australia for uh, for desktop devices, the most optimal CPC bit would be around 40 cents. If we speak about content promotion in India for mobile devices, uh, let's say you have a content website and you'd like to increase the exposure of your content with the help of MJD, you can bid one cent and that would be pretty much enough. And please bear in mind that uh, since the system is auction based, what we take into consideration is both uh, is CPC and CTR. The higher CTR you have, the lower you can bid. And uh, the higher you bid, the lower the CTR of an ad unit can be. So basically, if if we have a CPC bid of 10 cents and CTR of 0.5, uh, once we increase the CTR to 0.7, you can bid, let's say, 6 cents, and you will uh, receive the same amount of traffic, uh, the, uh, the higher volume of traffic for uh, lower 
funds. Traffic in flights doesn't have every country average bid. I get confused on how much I should bid. If you have any doubts on the most optimal CPC bid, uh, please feel free to add me or Oleg in Skype or send us an email and we'll uh, provide you with the most accurate bids up to date. Okay, how can I avoid traffic bot from bad publishers? This is the great question, Hunter. Uh, now I will show you, <coughs> sorry, I will show you a few tricks on how to optimize your campaign in the best possible way. As I mentioned before, we have an option of selective bidding. Basically, you can influence uh, the price of a bid on every publisher that is engaged in your campaign. It is here. Selective bidding. Looks like a hammer. Okay. You see all the publishers that are included into your campaign. You can see their IDs. You can see the coefficient uh, of the bidding. You can see the amount of clicks uh, received from this particular publisher, budget you've spent on this publisher, average CPC, the amount of conversions you had from this publisher, and then average conversion cost. And of course, you can turn off or turn on a specific publisher. Basically, in this way, uh, you can create your whitelists and blacklists. And what's what's more important and what's uh, what is more, let's say, handy for you as an affiliate marketers is that you can adjust the coefficient of an every publisher that is engaged in your campaign. And if it uh, if a certain publisher performs better than other uh, than others, let's say uh, this one, you can increase the bid for this particular uh, publisher. Right now, the coefficient is one and we are bidding 11 cents per click on this particular uh, publisher. If we'd like to uh, receive more, more traffic from this uh, destination, we can set up two. And as, as you see, uh, we have 22 cents CPC on this particular uh, publisher in this particular campaign. Once we click save, it is applied. And uh, besides that, uh, you can adjust CPC bids for sub IDs. If I see that a certain sub ID, let's say this one, performs a little bit better than the others, I can adjust bidding on this particular sub ID. Oh, you see, 1.5. Now we have a question. Uh, if you choose, I choose my geo as tier two, tier three countries, but I found some traffic from US. Do I want to pay for that? US based traffic also. No, you will not have to pay for the traffic from uh, the geos that are not included in your campaign targeting. Let's say they are free of charge. Can I use ID that I have from a Plex Spy tool for CPA marketing? Can you please elaborate on this question, Hunter? What do you mean by the ID from Atplexity? Okay, then uh, we'll answer this question later. I will provide you with my Skype and email ID so you can uh, email me, opening me in Skype regarding this question. Okay, so uh, that is pretty much it. On my side, uh, feel free to shoot me an email here is my email. And here is my Skype ID. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me, guys. Hunter whitelists uh, IDs are Pretty, pretty tricky question. Uh, 
for some for some campaigns, uh, those whitelists may be appropriate, and for some may not be appropriate, since you are using uh, different ad units and you might be using uh, different pre-lenders and lenders. So be careful with that. That is pretty tricky. Okay, guys. Uh, thank you. I'm giving the floor to Vlad. Please proceed. Thanks everyone for having me here, and uh, have a good day. That is pretty tricky. Okay, guys. Uh, thank you. I'm giving the floor to Vlad. Please proceed. Thanks everyone for having me here, and uh, have a good day. Jean, thank you very much. Uh, thank you for your part. So we had uh, some questions uh, in the end of red truck presentation, but first let me finish up with uh, the good things in this webinar. So some nice stuff, and this nice stuff is uh, we give up some uh, promo codes for MGIT. Those who make some deposit with MGIT, they will receive additional bonus deposit. And uh, with RedTrack, we will give you some uh, discount on the subscription to ease up your first month, maybe transition from some other uh, promo codes. And again, I will repeat, that we will uh, distribute the recorded version of this webinar and presentation to all the participants. Now, uh, there were uh, some of the questions regarding the red track. So, uh, for example, what tools we have. And we still have at least 20 minutes of our webinar, so feel free to ask all the questions regarding red track and MGIT. Uh, we will answer them right now. So, going back to the very first question regarding the tools that we have in Red Track. Well, um, all the trackers are similar because their goal is to track uh, the campaign. But uh, all the trackers are different in some features. Is that uh, so Volume is a great tool. Well, they have five years uh, up uh, of the history. We have only like uh, six months. So we have a lot of things to catch up, and we're catching up quickly. We already have uh, some of the features that make us different. I'll show you them to you, and uh, we will add up more uh, as uh, like time will unfold. So we'll see more from Red Track in April and in May. Well, so let me answer all the questions one by one. Tools. In tools, we have for uh, NAC a question about land landing pages. I will explain them later on. So in tools. Uh, we have conversion pixels that uh, were straightforward. Uh, they can generate uh, server-to-server or pixel-based conversions from uh, your affiliate networks or your e-com solutions or whatever place you send traffic to. Board blacklists. This is something we help you to optimize. We don't track traffic from IPs or user agents that you consider to be bots. You just create this blacklist and if you receive a click, uh, we don't distribute it to any office. We don't uh, count it towards your click limits. We just do nothing with them. You believe it's bots. We don't care. It's just getting it nowhere into the system. So you feel like you're getting bots from some of the traffic sources. Use the bot blacklist uh, to filter them out. Now, uh, next one is clocking. I always feel a bit awkward speaking about clocking when traffic sources are present. Sorry for that. Uh, but, uh, well, clocking is used by many affiliate marketers, and uh, we don't provide any databases, we just provide the tools that can be based on the IPs and user agents. If you feel like uh, you need to add extra features to clocking, uh, feel free to reach out to us, we'll do this. Again, we uh, usually don't recommend using clocking, but uh, we have this feature as, consider this, you can do the same with filters, but clocking make it a little bit more straightforward. We can rename it to filter preset to make it more like official. Well, default fallback uh, URL is uh, a feature that allows you to prevent any click losses. Why it's important? We have quite a few settings in the system that allow you to filter out clicks. Like, for example, in the offers, we have uh, at least two options. 
conversion caps, and unique visits. So it may happen that in campaign, you will add uh, some of the offers with the caps. And you send traffic and the caps is reached, but traffic is still coming in. Since the rules of this campaign do not allow you to distribute these clicks anywhere because cap is reached, technically the clicks are lost and we don't know where to send them. So what we can do is that you can have this account level fallback URL. So if you, for any reason, mess up with settings and you are losing clicks, you are not losing them, they will go to the URL you provide in there. However, we always advise you to either have an offer without, with no limitations, or what you can also do is that you can leverage the fact that we allow you multiple streams. So you can add one stream with very high weight, like whatever, 10,000, 100,000, and you can have a backup stream. It may be fifth, fourth, sixth stream, um, which uh, will allow you to have a backup option if any rules in your main working streams are set up in such a way that clicks can be redirected, they will go to this last stream with very, very low weight, so no clicks will be lost. Now, uh, this is another good feature, and again, you can use filters to send traffic across uh, different streams, like you can have one campaign, but you filter out either by geo or most obvious way by the device type, like you want to send mobile traffic to one stream and desktop traffic to the other stream. So you can just uh, do this either by device type or by I prefer operating system. I can include iOS and include Android. And here you go. All the traffic uh, in stream one will actually be uh, mobile. And then uh, you either exclude these two operating systems or just leave it blank and to all the other traffic including mobile, if you leave it filter blank, will go to the second stream. Again, uh, I highly encourage you to use uh, unique uh, clicks uh, limit feature, and the benefit of this can be seen in the campaign. If you receive uh, a campaign with uh, a lot of clicks, but a few number of unique clicks, or like this one, test example, then uh, you definitely know you need to add more offers in there and limit the number of times a unique visitor is seeing one particular offer. This will increase your conversions, uh, well, very significantly. Now, again, for more advanced use, we have API. In here, we have uh, click logs and conversion logs. Please note that you can actually push back conversions to the system manually. Uh, by many ways, two most obvious would be to upload them as a CSV file or imitate uh, the post back by manually uh, grabbing the click ID from your click logs and then uh, using uh, S2S tracking, like just to substitute this part macro with your click ID and cut and paste it into the browser. This will give you the click ID. Now, for the landing pages, so that's very simple and straight uh, forward question, uh, how it works. Landing, and let me show an example, is something that happens when you click the campaign. Let us uh, create a campaign, the one we did. Uh, let us add a landing page and click Save. So we grab a URL, we paste it. And we get to any page. Again, this is very simple in page just to show you how it works. When we click URL, we'll get to the offer. If we have uh, more than one offer here, uh, the clicks will be distributed between offers given the ways you have in the system, including all the filters, conversion caps, unique visitor caps, etc. etc. So click and we go to the offer. Uh, how then in page looks? Um, let me show you the URL of the landing page. And this is the source code of the page. We have all the documentation in place. Please note that you need to have your link 
modified by this. So you don't have any links to any office, you just have this placeholder, or you can use your own custom tracking domain instead of our service one, and we will distribute the clicks based on the settings of your campaigns. What else we have is that uh, you can actually track direct traffic, but then you, we advise you to create a special tracking campaign, uh, put uh, this tracking link in here, and then any direct clicks that go to a landing page will also be tracked by us and will be reported to this specially designated campaign for direct traffic for this landing, for this landing page. And you can also use LP Protect. Uh, it will allow your landing page to be hidden from the tools like Edplexity. So if it Edplexity reads uh, your URL somewhere, but then wants to show the data to other users, uh, they won't be able to do this because we won't allow uh, the uh, page to be seen following the similar click that already happened. That's, I guess, all about landing pages. Uh, maybe any other questions? Uh, and by the way, there were a lot of questions about time zones. In Red Track, you can set up uh, your own time zone and uh, you will have a uh, date reported in the time zone of your choosing. Now, uh, any more questions regarding Red Track? Well, link for the clock in Docs. Uh, yes, we have a link here. In knowledge base, just search for clocking and you'll get it. We also have quite a few videos uh, around, mostly on YouTube, and you can also email uh, to support for questions. Yeah, uh, smart links I can describe, but will not show right now. It's still in the beta. We have it in closed access with a couple of uh, like early testers. Basically, smart links uh, works very similar to campaigns. But uh, instead of uh, all these uh, settings, all these streams, you have just one stream with uh, multiple landing pages, if you need it, and multiple offers. And by multiple, I literally mean hundreds, maybe at least 50. Uh, for smart links, all offers will, will have uh, additional uh, targeting criteria that you usually see in the affiliate networks. It's like uh, device types, geos, uh, providers, ISPs, what have you. So when you run uh, your campaigns through a smart link, the system will first automatically pick up all the offers that are tied to a smart link based on the data from the click, like if it's uh, US EOS uh, Verizon, it will pick all of the offers that are relevant to this click, and then it will run uh, the auction, and based on some uh, fancy machine learning and AI stuff, will pick uh, the offer that is more likely to convert. For this algorithm, we apply multiple parameters, starting from uh, the click data, and in reports, uh, you can see that we attribute click data across multiple data slices, and it will also since we do a smart link on the traffic source base, we'll consider all the data in the sub IDs that uh, you can get from a traffic source, providing more than enough data points for quite a good automatic optimization. So, in a nutshell, with smart links, you just need to make sure that you have a pool, and the, the bigger the better pool of offers, on one topic, maybe uh, gambling, dating, uh, mobile games, what have you, that fit together, you add uh, relevant landing pages, and you send traffic at scale so that the system can learn and train and distribute the clicks properly. Uh, again, smart links are in closed beta. If you want uh, to participate in this, share your feedback, uh, get some early access, feel free to write to us and we'll see if we can uh, fit you in the program. Uh, please consider that smart links work best when you're sending at least 100,000 of clicks per day per smart link. So it's usually for large-scale campaigns. Uh, smart links come at no additional cost. Uh, they will be available to RedTrack uh, subscribers. And uh, let me show you just the subscriptions. We have uh, four subscriptions, and uh, 
given the amount of events we need for smart links, we advise business and enterprise users that they might benefit from smart links, but we can also open smart links for the professional customers. Again, uh, there is, uh, we just don't do it for Stata because uh, Stata plan don't have enough events to properly leverage the smart links and we don't want our customers to have bad experience. Uh, smart links are planning to be open for public use uh, in May, but again, uh, it's quite a complex uh, feature, it requires a lot of testing, so we will make sure it goes live only when we are confident that it works as expected. However, since uh, we're not doing it from scratch and we are just repurposing the technology built by FISE, our current company, to accommodate more data points available in red track and slightly different conversion goals. So it works. We're just playing on adjusting and fine tuning it right now. Yes, uh, we have onboarding support. We reserve this onboarding support for our uh, paid customers, not for free accounts. Uh, however, we also provide a lot of uh, explanatory videos and documentations in uh, our knowledge base. I do, frankly speaking, answer all the questions in our support channel. So you may substitute this uh, with instead of onboarding demo sessions. And we also answer all the questions on the webinars like this. Any other questions regarding the red trip? Cool. So, uh, surprisingly, if we... Okay, so let me then uh, pass over to Jean. Yeah, we, we're here. We don't plan to leave anywhere until we have a questions. So the question is to MG or Red Track. Okay, so I'm here and ready to answer your questions and just should. And guys, uh, you can always follow up with us after the presentation. Uh, just uh, write to MG or Red Track. We have all the contact details in the presentation that we will follow up with after the webinar. Yes, it's available on all billing plans. And it actually works like a regular uh, filter in your streams. Just make sure you set it right and test before you launch. Well, uh, the question about MGIT support, I guess, is to MGIT. So, um, I guess all the questions are to MG. So let me uh, pass the word to Jean. So, um, I guess all the questions are to MG. So let me uh, pass the word to Jean. Uh, regarding the MJD support team. Might be a case since we are pretty loaded with work. So please have a little bit more patience. We are doing our best to answer as fast as we can. Any other questions? Uh, Antoine, uh, your question regarding the white list and starting the campaign. This was related to me or this was related to Vlad? To me, I guess, yeah? Uh, yeah, uh, as I said, what the white lists and black lists are pretty tricky since you are using different uh, creatives, different pre that the campaign you've uh, 
took this white or black list and it may play not in your favor actually i would recommend you to start with the full list of publishers available for your campaign and then after the test campaign once you see what publishers perform the best for you uh, create a separate white or black list did i answer your question Unfortunately not. Unfortunately not, you can just uh, set up a limit of clicks per campaign. You cannot set up a, a clicks limit per uh, publisher or ad unit. Although it, it's a good question and we all think about it. Thanks for the feedback. Any more questions regarding the MJD? Jake, just uh, Nick, no, definitely no. Uh, we have our own uh, uh, traffic quality assurance team. Besides that, we are forensic verified and we are members of IAB. So you can be sure that there will be no bot traffic at all. Yep. Thanks for backing me up, MJD account. Just follow the link. Unwanted traffic, you mean? Uh, but in a place that that give the ID of website that the advertiser is using in order to do you recommend that? No, since Adplexity and any other uh, spy tool may not be, uh, let's say, specific, and uh, there might be uh, some di discrepancy in the details of the IDs. So be careful with that, Hunter. Any other questions? Use your chance, guys. Shoot all the questions you have. Yes, this is the best approach you can have, Hunter. Test whatever comes to your mind, test it. Test it, collect the data, and make the decisions, and make money, of course. You can target any geo you want. Uh, in, particular, in particular, we are more uh, targeted to the worldwide, besides uh, CIS countries. Uh, anyways, uh, if you would like to, uh, to target any countries in Western Europe, we can always refer you to our a partner company uh, that is called MarketGit, and uh, you can buy huge volumes of traffic from Russia, Ukraine, Belarus, Kazakhstan, or whatever there. Tier, tier 2 and 3 work pretty well. In any case, it depends on the offer and the approach to the campaign you use. So it all depends, you have to test it. If, if your broad testing is the number of clicks you test a widget ID before you move to the next one. It, Antoine, it all depends on the style of optimization you use. Uh, for example, when it comes to me, I usually spend around three, three to five uh, CPA goals, uh, basically payouts per widget to define if it's worth testing or not. Again, it's, it's pretty tricky because um, the traffic that we are having from our uh, publishers may vary and it depends on the source they are buying their traffic from. Basically, this will be the, the traffic that you're going to use. 
And uh, for example, the same digit ID can uh, perform differently today and tomorrow. If uh, today performance was okay, tomorrow it can be terrific. So I, I would rather not stick to the number of clicks. Yes, basically you can influence CTR only with uh, images and headlines. When you start the campaign, you basically are having a so-called green light for new teasers. You'll be granted 5,000 uh, 5, 5, impressions per every ad unit uh, with an average CTR for this vertical and this device type. Once you receive those 5,000 impressions, uh, we will uh, define what is the actual CTR of your ad unit and uh, you'll of course see it in, in your dashboard. If you see that uh, your ad unit is not uh, getting a high click-through rate, you can always adjust it and resubmit it for moderation. You can set up uh, a new image or you can uh, play with the headline. No, you will not be charged for, for a targeted traffic. Any other questions? So shall I shall I start the the countdown till I'm off? So Vlad can uh, take the floor and uh, proceed with the with the sum up of the presentation. So five, four, three, two. Someone said that if I upload 500 only, then I can get my dedicated manager. Yes and no. Uh, recently, we've introduced a new team uh, within our network. Those guys are called customer success managers. And if you are self-registered client, and if you are not even uh, funding $500 or more, you will still get uh, an some kind of account management support, but only for 30 days. So basically those guys will help you out with ad units, with optimization, with tracking setup, etc., etc. But only for 30 days. Starting the countdown once again. Five, four, three, Two, one, that's it guys. Thanks once again for the attention. Okay, Hunter, if we started with just 100, yes. Although I will not recommend you to start with that low budget since you will not get any sufficient amount of data that you can analyze and make decisions. Okay guys, uh, if you have any other questions, you have my email, you have my Skype ID, feel free to add me, shoot me an email and ask me any questions you have regarding the MJD and running successful campaigns with us. Thanks a lot, Vlad, the floor is yours. Add me, shoot me an email and ask me any questions you have regarding the MJD and running successful campaigns with us. Thanks a lot, Vlad, the floor is yours. Okay, again, thank you very much for your time today on this webinar. Uh, if you have no questions, uh, feel free to leave and feel free to follow up with us. This is the last slide of our presentation today, which will actually say thank you. And you can find all the data in this presentation. We have the contact details for our speakers today. And uh, again, you will see email from us. So any questions to MG or RedTrack, just follow up, ask your questions, and to look for our coming webinars with other great traffic sources and affiliate networks. Have a great day, everybody, and good uh, relief.